we will forsake in the name of Jesus because God wants us to experience it. Very quickly this morning, I just have a word for us that I believe that God wants us to go deeper into. The, this month has been the, word, the month of the supernatural. The theme for this month has been experiencing the supernatural. And my text today is going to be from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 1 to 25. Experiencing the supernatural. Our pastor laid the foundation and says that the supernatural is the right of every believer. Every believer in Christ Jesus should experience the supernatural, is entitled to experiencing the supernatural. In this Exodus chapter 19, verses 1, we're going to read together. It's a long one, but I, I don't have a lot of scriptures, so I want us to just focus on this one, and I want us to extract what God wants to teach us from this word in the name of Jesus. In the month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into, into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from um, Raphidim, had come to the desert of Sinai, and they had camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountains. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my command covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be with me, or you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There are words which you shall speak to the children. These are the words that you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them, all the words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, chapter, um, verses 10, And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set bounds for the people all around them, Take heed to yourself that you do not go up the mountains to touch it, its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch him, let him not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow, whether man or beast. He shall not live when the trumpet sounds, sounds long. They shall come near the, mount, the mountain. Hallelujah. And Moses went down to the, the mountain and to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And they said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thundering and lightning and the thick clouds on the mountain and the sound of trumpets was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp, they trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God.
and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now, Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. It smoked a sand like the smoke of a furnace, and the old mountains, they quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, be, long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people lest they break through the gaze at the Lord and many of them perish. And also the priest would come near and the Lord sanctified, oh, I'm sorry, and the priest who come near the Lord sanctified themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for they want us saying, set bounds around mountains and sanctify it. Then the Lord said to Moses, away, get down, and then come up, you and Aaron with, and you, and Aaron with you. But do not let the priest and the people break through to come up to the Lord lest it breaks out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This is a long scripture. Hallelujah. But in this verse or chapter, we saw how God wanted to reveal himself to a group of people. First, we read that they came out of Egypt Egypt signifies bondage, where they had been enslaved, where they had been maltreated, where they had been, 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 been um, defiled. God brought them out of Egypt to himself. Now, on their way to their promised land, which the Lord promised them, God wanted to reveal himself to them. Why? God enjoys our interaction. God, as, as big and mighty that God is, God enjoys our relationship with him. He said to Adam, let us create man in our image. Why could God say, why would God say, let us create man in the image of me? Because he wanted to have that similarity, something that he can, that he can, you know when you see your son, you, he has your nature. God created us to have his nature. But while they were in bondage, they were away from God. So God called them out of bondage because he missed them. And he said, now I want to reveal myself to these people. I want to show them what, how they are supposed to be living. They have been living naturally. I want to show them a supernatural dimension. Then Jesus, God told Moses, God said, now tell them. In verses 10, tell them that I want to visit them. I want to come to them. But the first thing they must do is that they must consecrate themselves. Hallelujah. God said because they've been living so naturally, I want them to begin to live supernaturally. Because you know you got to get a little lusty to be. All right? But Jesus said, stay away because I want you to focus. I want to come to you. Then God came to them on the third day. To be consecrated, it means to be made clean by a priest. So Moses consecrated them. Only a priest can make you clean. That was before Jesus. But when the Jesus came, the blood of Jesus becomes, our, becomes the, the tool that consecrates us. So God told them, make yourself clean. So Moses made them clean. God asked them to cleanse themselves and to, be sep to separate themselves unto him for three days that he wants to come to them. Why? Because God wants them to experience the supernatural. Can I tell you that as a believer, our normal, inter or what we consider normal is supposed to be supernatural. As a believer, we're not supposed to be natural anymore. We're supposed to be supernatural because there's been a conversion. 
When your daddy is a god, you are what? A god. When your daddy is the Satan, you are what? A Satan. When your daddy is natural, you are natural. When we change in the spirit and we become converted to God, we become like God. The Bible even says that he has made us even as God. So God wants us to be like him. So when he wanted to come to the children of Israel, and when we say the children of Israel, the same applies to us. God is looking to come to us. But he says, one, you must consecrate yourself. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 to 2, Isaiah 59 verses 1 to 2, he says, Surely the arms of the Lord are not too short to save us, nor his ears too dull to hear us, but our iniquities have separated us from our God. Our sin has hidden his face from us. We know God does not like sin. We know that he doesn't like anything that does not give him glory. So every time a sinner prays, or not a sinner, someone who commits a sin, God does not hear because all he sees is sin. But when you consecrate yourself, when you come and declare yourself clean by the blood of Jesus, and you renounce the sin, and you say, God, I don't want to do it anymore. You got to give me the grace. Then God says, okay, he's ready. Now let me show myself to him. Experiencing the supernatural is not for a special group of people. It's not for pastors. It's not for preachers. It's for anyone that is saved and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. If you have access to the blood, you can experience the supernatural. If you have been bought and redeemed with the blood, you got a right to experience the supernatural. It's not just for a group of people. It's not for people who wear ties. It's for everybody. If you believe God and you confess him as your Lord and Savior, you are saved. Period. That is how we can experience supernatural. God told them, consecrate yourself. It doesn't mean it's not cool to be consecrated. Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. He, I'm, I'm going to share with us. The devil uses deceit. Hallelujah. He uses deceit. He likes to deceive people. The tr- his only tricks. Now I took my shoes off because we're about to go in. <laughs> his only tricks is that he comes to us with a thought that is contrary to the word of God. Imagine the devil coming to somebody and telling them that they are what they are not. You entertain the thought. You dwell on the thought. After you dwell on the thought, the thought moves you into an action because what you think is what you do, right? We're not robots. We're not. Pro- he programs us into a lie. When he tells you, oh, your mommy, you know, if he says somebody's mommy doesn't like them, right? It makes the child believe my mama doesn't like me. And after a while, the mama doesn't, and he believes it, and, and the, the, the lie is programmed in the mind of the child. Over time, the child begins to act it out. Disregarding his mother, disobeying his mother. And over time, when that is a continuous, it becomes a habit. And over time, a habit becomes a pattern. Generation to generation, you begin to see the pattern. Because when the devil programs that lie, and he's like, oh, I can get somebody in this, in this family. He's going to try it on everybody in the family. That's why generational patterns are real. Because he's not using something that is new. He's using something that your forefathers, that he used on your forefathers. Hallelujah. And a repeated pattern becomes a strong hold. A repeated pattern becomes a strong hold. That is the deceit of the enemy. The enemy deceives us to believe that we can't experience the supernatural because it's only for a group of people. It's only for a type of people. You got to look like a certain way for you to experience the supernatural. But here God is saying that if you will consecrate yourself, if you will separate yourself and you will make yourself clean by the blood of Jesus, you can achieve the supernatural. And it happened. Because on the third day, God came to them. He came to them on the mountain. 
He said, he said to Moses, I will come to you in a way that the people will see that I talk to you face to face. And it shall be a remembrance to them. They experience the supernatural here. God on a daily basis, he's looking to engage us. He's looking to talk to us like a father to a child. God every day is looking for our attention. But our attention is divided. Hallelujah. He is looking to get our attention. But the devil is looking to get our attention too. So, whichever one gets there first, the truth or a lie. If you believe the truth, the Bible says that you will be set free. If you believe the lie of the devil, it be, you be go into a place called a stronghold. So, how do we break strongholds? We cast it out in the name of Jesus. And we infuse the truth of the word of God into such stronghold. The seat can come as darkness of the mind. Why are we talking about the seat? Because the devil likes to manipulate people. And today, because we are the light house of light, we want to shed the light of God into every lies that the enemy has told us. The devil come to deceive us in our mind. It blinds us so that we do not see the truth in the gospel of Christ. It makes it look like the Bible is just a storybook that was written by somebody who didn't have a job. But the Bible was not written by somebody who didn't have a job. The Bible was an impression of the Holy Spirit. Because everything that happened in the Bible really did happen. We saw it. We just came back from Jerusalem. So it's not just a cooked up book that one author said, oh, I'm going to just write something just to give... Just, just to make my name out there. No, the Bible is a complete book and it's the mind of God. It's the manual for living. When what does the devil do? The devil make us believe that the Bible is not a relevant book. The Bible is the manual for your living. If you don't read the Bible every day, let me tell you something. You open yourself for attack. You open, if you don't read your Bible every day and you don't pray every day, trust me, the devil is just looking for that way to come in. Because the Bible is what God gave us. It says, by the word of God, you shall be free. The word of God is light. The Bible says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword that pierces asunder the dividing of the soul and spirit. The word of God is light. There is a light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. That's the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, you cannot fight against the devil. He's no match with you. The devil came to Jesus. He came to fight with him. He came to tempt him. Just like the devil coming to us and tempting us every day. But we don't have the word. I always say, oh yeah, come on, get, get out of here. He doesn't listen to that. He listens to the word. Because the word is power. The word creates. When you infuse the word of God, the Bible inside of you, you your spirit man gets charged. Get that battery cha charged. But over time, when you don't read your Bible every day, your battery gets low. The devil comes to you. Quick temptation gets you off your, off your feet. Because your spiritual battery is low. That's why the devil can easily come and deceive you, making you believe a lie that is not true, that they don't like you, they're not trying to help you, but you don't know that he's really trying to get you. He's really coming for you. The Bible says here in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1. It says, and even if the gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they, do, they cannot see the light of the gospel, of the glory of, of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. The devil has blind, even Christians, they come to church as a religious service. Oh, I just got to be there because I got to be there. But the truth about it is that you don't got to be there because you want to be there. I'm telling you, you're either, the devil is either trying to pull you or Jesus is trying to pull you. So whoever you give yourself to is who's going to get you. It's not religious jargon, it's the truth. You give yourself to God, God got you. You give yourself to the devil, he got you. And he's going to give you everything that he got. Hallelujah. 
The devil has blinded the eyes and the minds of people that they cannot see the light. He comes to you as a lie, saying that it's not cool to serve God. Is it cool to be in bondage? Well, some people think it is. Some people prefer bondage than being free. In fact, the thought of being free gives them anxiety. That's a lie. But some people like to be in bondage. But Jesus has come to give us light and to free us from every lie of the devil. How can the devil also try to deceive you to making you feel as though you cannot attain the supernatural? He comes to deceive you constantly to put people in bondage by, by, by deceit manifest as a rustling. I will explain that. In Ephesians 6 verses 12, the Bible says that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I just told you that whoever you give yourself to is who got you. There is a constant war going on in the cosmic between our soul. So don't be deceived that you got all your cars, you got your shoes, or everything's working for you, and you think that you are free. There's a constant war concerning you. And who you give yourself to is who's going to get you. For the Bible says here that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't fight against people that we see. The one that's really fighting against us is the rulers of darkness. The rulers against the authority, against cosmic powers that are in the dark places. That's who we're fighting against. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Against powers and rulers of darkness in this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. They're constantly fighting to get us. And God and his angels are constantly fighting to get us. But who you give yourself to is who got you. And it's only based on the choice that you choose. If God got you, or if you give yourself to God, I can assure you that you will begin to experience some supernatural dimension. When the Bible says you will cast out demons in his name, you become an opposition to the enemy. If he come at you in a type of way, you can cast him out in the name of Jesus because you have chosen a side. A lot of us want to be in the middle. Oh yeah, I'm going to do this today, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to do this today... You don't have power because it's like you charge your battery and you, you, you lose it. You charge your battery and you lose it. Do you have power? No. If you're in the middle, you pray today and then you're like, oh, I'm going to go do, you know, whatever. I, I'm going to go hang out with my friend. I'm going to go to the club here. I'm going to do a little bit of that. I'm going to smoke a little bit of a thing and weed and everything. Mm? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> But you charge your battery a little bit today and then you lose it tomorrow. You have no power. And the only reason that we can, we can be in freedom through the blood of, Je blood of Jesus is that we receive power. The Bible says that we receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Salvation, the first thing that salvation brought to us is power. Hallelujah. Now, how do we experience the supernatural and silence the deceit and the lies that the devil tells us that we cannot get and have a relationship with God? We cannot experience the supernatural. He lies to us, trying to deceive us that we cannot, that we, we have to be in our bondage. But I came to bust his bubbles today that we can experience the supernatural. We can connect to God in dimensions that we don't even understand. Jesus, God told Moses, go to my people and tell them to consecrate themselves. And we've talked about that. What does it mean to consecrate yourself? The first thing that it means to consecrate yourself, to be made clean by a priest back in the days before Jesus or by the blood of Jesus is to first repent. Repentance is the turning away 
from wrongdoing. The devil will put thoughts in your mind. Oh, what did you, oh, well, I know what you did yesterday. Do you know that you can repent of it today and be made clean? Because the devil wants to hold us in bondage by lies, by saying God cannot forgive you what you, about, uh, on, uh, God cannot forgive you on what you did yesterday. But if you repent, you will be saved. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verses 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because you see, if you don't repent, if you don't confess your sin, the devil is going to hold on to that loophole to keep feeding you with the lies and the deceit in order to keep you in bondage so that you don't experience the supernatural. But today I came to have come to expose to you in the name of Jesus that you can be free if you will repent of your sins. What are the things that you know you ought not to be doing? And God is telling you, my son, my daughter, don't do it. What are the things that you constantly engage in? And God is saying, I don't want you to do this because you just leave the door open for the devil to come in. And you're like, okay, God, I'm going to do this this one time. That's going to be it. But then you go back to do it. God is saying here today, in order to experience my supernatural power, in order for me to continue to be with you, because I cannot hold sin, says the Lord, you must repent. The Bible in Matthew chapter 3 verses 2, Matthew 3 verses 2, in the Amplified Version, I love how the Bible presents, you know, and, and interprets repent for us here. Matthew 3, verses 2, if we can quickly get on it, please. Matthew 3, verses 2, and saying, repent, which means think differently. Change your mind, regretting your sin, and change your conduct. That's what the Bible explains to us that repentance means. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When they say something is at hand, my phone is at hand. Right? That means that the kingdom of heaven, the supernatural, is at arm's length. But what is stopping us from experiencing the supernatural is that we have refused to repent of that particular sin. A sin of pride that the Lord is, has been speaking to us about. God says here, repent. I'm talking to believers because I believe everyone is saved in this house. But if you're not saved, but if you're still saved, there still, might still be one, that one thing that you're like, God, I'm going to hold on to this until I'm in my old age. And God is saying, no, you don't got to hold on to it. Repent. Think differently about it. Change your mind about it. Regret the sin and change your conduct. For my kingdom, the supernatural is at hand. Is at hand. You know, let me tell you one thing about the supernatural. One thing I enjoy most about God is that when you operate in the supernatural, God reveals secrets to you. I love that. If you ask me what is one thing I love about that, uh, about the supernatural dimension, is the fact that I can hear secrets. There was a time I was praying in my, I was praying, and the Lord was telling me a conversation about something that happened before I was born. And I asked my mother, and she said, yes, it happened. There was a lady, we used to have a nanny here. One day I went to her and I said, the Lord showed me something about you before you got married. Now our kids are in their late 40s. And I told her, I said, God showed me a something that happened between before you, were, you got married to your husband. And she said, yeah, that thing happened. And I said, that's why one of your daughter is still not married. Because somebody has a hold. They had the right to hold that daughter as a ransom 
because of what her husband did to an ex-girlfriend. The supernatural is real. But that's what I love about the supernatural because God can reveal to you. God can reveal to you the strategy for your business. He can lay it all out for you. That it's a one-stop shop. You get there, doors are open. There was a story of a man that I heard. He said he applied for this job and, and um, it, I mean, there's no way you could get the job because this was a, a, a seven-figure job. And, and he said, while I was praying, he said his boss that he interviewed with said at night, something hit him in the night and told him, you see that boy, you give him that job. They had already written a letter for the other um, interviewer or interviewee to get the job. But when God touched the boss, they changed the letter and they gave him that letter. That's what the supernatural can do. The, la the fact that you don't have favor is because there's a dark cloud around you. This world is very supernatural. You have no idea. You, have, you think it's just all what you see? And there are hidden agendas that are going? This world is very supernatural. But here, God wants us also to be supernatural because there is power to be released. Hallelujah. But here he's saying, repent. I want to come to you, says the Lord. But I cannot come to you because your garment is filthy. The Lord was showing Joshua. Well, Joshua was, didn't know there was an angel by him. He didn't even know that his garment was dirty. But he was asking that God will come to him. God will come and reveal himself to him. But God now showed him. That your garment is filthy, and that's why I cannot come to you. Some of us, our garment are filthy, real filthy. But that's not to condemn you. That's to say to you that there is a way out. God says repent. God says repent of your sin. Renounce your sin. Repent of your sin. Think and regret of your past. The things that you did in the past, when you didn't know better, God here is calling for repentance. Because the kingdom of heaven is so close to you. But God cannot come because you're filthy. The next thing is to renounce your, your sins. If you must have the Lord come to you, if you must be consecrated unto him to experience the supernatural, you must renounce your sin. Proverbs 28 verses 13. To renounce means that you speak against the sin. Proverbs 28 verses 13. The Bible says that he who conceals his sin will not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have the mercy of God. Let me tell you, to live on this earth, sometimes we will do wrong. We will err, right? We would, we would err. Like the Englishman would say, right? English is not my first language, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we will, we will go outside of God's plan for our lives. But God has given us a pathway to come back. It says renounce your sin. Renounce it. The Bible says in the Amplified Version of the same scripture, whoever conceals his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and turns away from his sin will find compassion and mercy. Because God wants to come to us. All the struggles that you're going through and you're going at it alone and you feel alone like nobody understands, nobody sees you, nobody knows you. It's because the only one who can help you is the Lord. And if he's going to help you, he's got to come to you. And if he has to come to you, you have to be clean. Because he's not going to condone filthiness. You need him. 
He doesn't need you. You want him. If you make yourself available, he will want you. He's not going to compromise his standard just to accommodate you. His standards are his standards. And his standard is the standard of heaven. So, but if you will renounce your sin, God will come to you. The Bible says, I will look up to the hills from whence comes, my help comes from the Lord. But if your help will come from the Lord, he's got to come to you. He's got to send his angels to you. But your garments are clean, un unclean. But today, if you will with your mouth speak against your sin and renounce it. Say, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired. You got to say it with your heart and you got to mean it. Because God is not playing. If you want him, he will come to you. But he doesn't like, he doesn't play, he, he, tricks are for kids. It's not for him. If you're for real, he's for real. If you want to be wishy-washy, he's not ready for that. Because the Bible says that God is, is, is looking for those who will diligently seek him. Hallelujah. The other point here is that you will forsake. God wants to come to us. He wants us to experience him in the supernatural. He wants us to live in the supernatural, but you have to forsake your sins. To forsake means that you will resolve not to repeat them again. So now you have repented. You've said sorry. You have renounced. You've confessed that you're sorry. You acknowledge your sin. Now here God is saying that you forsake them. Stay away from them. One of the reasons why people keep doing the same and repeating the same pattern is because they keep hanging out in the same association that brought the same thing in the first place. If you must forsake him, you have to find new friends. If you must forsake your sin, you have to change your environment. And sometimes that doesn't mean you change locality. It just means that you have a change of mind and you stop hanging out with the same people that made you do the, th the things that is not pleasing to God. And you must take responsibility. Forsake your sin. What is that one thing that the Lord keeps telling you, don't do, don't do. I want to come to you. I want to change you. I want to show you the path to life. I want to transform you. I really want to give you the original plan that I got for you that the enemy is trying to steal. And he's saying, I want you to stop doing that. You're like, God, no, I'm just going to um, do this right now. And then when I'm done, maybe when I'm in my 60s, I'm going to do what you say. But I have spoken to a lot of older people and men. They have a lot of regrets. Some of them, God would have been telling them, do this for me. They'll say, At my, when I was 20, the Lord appeared to me. They can tell you stories, but they don't show anything. Because even though God told them, God sent somebody to them, God showed them in a dream, God was trying to reveal himself to them, but they chose their way. You are a result of your choices. You, nobody is a, listen, like I told somebody, yeah, you were born into this family and this is what they do in this family. But if you continued in this family or in the ways of this family, it's no longer their choice or, or their, their, their problem is now you. It's you making the choice constantly, knowing that it's the wrong thing to do. If they're doing drugs in your family, you were born into it. There was a time you knew it was a bad thing and you continued to do it. That means that the responsibility now is no longer on your parents, it's not on you. Because when you know, you take responsibility. God here is saying, I want to show us the supernatural. But who will you choose? Whose way would you choose? Forsake your sin. Let the wicked forsake their ways. And the unrighteous man his thought. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God will abundantly pardon. That's in Isaiah 55 verses 7. Isaiah 55 verses 7. So when we are talking about the, uh, uh, thank you, pastor. Yeah, let the wicked forsake his ways. 
Let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This is the word of God. This is not my word. If you are a wicked man, an unrighteous man, doing unrighteous things, forsake your ways and let him return back to the Lord because God wants to show us the supernatural let me tell you the supernatural is at arm's length if you stretch your hands like this that's how close God is to you but he cannot come to you because of a filthy garment but today we will repent Today we will renounce and today we will forsake in the name of Jesus because God wants us to experience him. God wants us to be so real to us. He wants to show us his path. He wants to heal us. God wants to set us on the right path. God wants to take away sadness, anxiety, and depression from us. He wants to take away all the deceits of the devil. God wants to give us another chance. God wants to bless us. God wants us to experience him in a supernatural way. But today, we must repent. We must repent of our sin of pride. Our sin of, oh, if it's not my way, it's the highway. I want us to put our hand on our chest and say God I repent of my sin and begin to call those things that you're repenting of I want you to confess them and forsake them in the name of Jesus Lord I repent of pride I repent of not following your word I repent of not following your will I repent of going my own way trying to do things my own way in the name of Jesus Lord I repent oh God as a church we repent in the name of Jesus, I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I repent. Whatever sin is a stronghold in your life, you can repent of it right now. The blood of Jesus is available for you. The blood of Jesus is ready to wash you clean. The blood of Jesus is ready to make you whole. Lord, we repent. Lord, we repent. Lord, we repent. Lord, we renounce. We renounce. We confess. We say that no more will sin have hold over us anymore. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we forsake, we regret of our wrongdoings, and we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will help us to walk in your path. In the name of Jesus, even though it may not be, be, be a wide road, we choose to follow you so that we can experience you in a greater dimension. In the name of Jesus, come on church, open up your mouth and pray and ask the Lord, Holy Ghost, I ask you oh God that you will change me I want to experience you in a greater dimension I want you oh God to change us to make us like you that we may experience the supernatural in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Lord we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we thank you for your word we thank you for the power that is in your word we thank you the, for the power that can set free that is in your word. Lord, we come to you today. We know, oh God, that you want to dwell with us like a father speaks to the son, like a friend to a friend. And we know that sin and iniquity is what separates us from you. So God, today we come in the name, in the name of Jesus, your son. And we ask that you will restore us back into that place of authority that place of supernatural and you will begin to open up our eyes let our eyes be open to see the, the the things that you will for us in the name of Jesus Christ father we thank you we thank you for your word this morning lord we receive it with thanksgiving we receive it with glory in the name of Jesus for in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. I want to give this opportunity for someone who is not a child of God. You see, you can't even experience God if you're not a child of God. God is not going to come to you because on your, you, you're not a son. You're not his daughter. So if you're not saved and you're watching us online, it is you I'm speaking to. 
God wants you to be saved. God, what does it mean to be saved? God wants it, the blood of Jesus, his son, the ultimate sacrifice to extend to you. To be, for you to be a partaker of that precious sacrifice that was made for you. If you're that person, I want you to just lift up your voice wherever you are and just say, God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that you are the Savior. So, Lord, I humbly come today that you will save me from all walks of darkness. I renounce the devil and his ways. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And I will serve you forever. For in Jesus' name, I have prayed. If you have said that prayer, believe it or not, you have been saved. Because that's what Jesus, God asks us to do. That if you confess him as Lord and Savior, you are saved. That's how easy it is to be saved. Now that's the first step. The next step is to be discipled. Hallelujah. So please join us. Our info is on our, um, is scrolling right in the base of, of the screen there. Connect with us. Let us disciple you so that you can become into the image of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, can we just lift up our hands and worship the Lord this morning? And just thank him. If God has spoken a word to your heart, bless the name of the Lord. Just say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this word that I've received. Thank you, God, for this word that you have brought to me. Help me never to forget it. Help me never to, to, to allow the enemy mess with me anymore. Help me to take responsibility. Help me, oh God, to develop my relationship with you. Help me, oh God, to fellowship with you every day and every day and every night. Lord, we bless your name and we give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we give the Lord a shout? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Blessed be God for that word. And I want us to commit to doing things that will keep us accountable unto salvation, unto holiness. God is always looking for a man. But no matter how desperate God is, he will never use the unclean. He will never use the unfaithful. He will never use the unrighteous. God is always looking for who to use. But he will never use the one whose garment is not white. So please, we have heard the word of the Lord today. Uh, John 15, 3 says, Now you are clean by the words that I speak to you. We have been clean now. Let us take responsibility to remain clean and sanctified for the master's use in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're about to close the service this morning. But just a couple of announcements. By the grace of God, we'll continue in this series of teachings on Wednesday, during our Bible study, our Bible study is called the Recharge Service. So please get prepared. It's going to be online at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please let us get ready. Every time we get in the Word, it's a time to get energized and recharged. So we shall be receiving that in Jesus' name. Also, um, by the grace of God, we are going to be having some specialized Sunday services going forward because I want us to focus on certain things that God wants to do for us. So like we're having right now seven Saturdays of family deliverance. Um, God spoke to me this morning. We're going to be having seven Sundays of rest, rest, rest. I don't know if you need rest, but I need rest. It is possible to live life without trouble. It is possible to have everything working and working well. So we're going to start having that by the grace of God where we we'll focus on what it takes and how to experience the supernatural rest that God has for us. 
I know we'll be blessed in all those services in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stretch our hands and pray for the vessel God used this morning to send the word. Let's ask God to strengthen her, that these words will not speak against her in the day of judgment, that the Lord will continue to make her a doer of the word, not just the speaker of the word. Father, we ask and pray that your grace be released upon your daughter this afternoon as she has been used by you to bless us, that she also will be blessed and that her cup will run over with your blessings. Help her to be an example of the words that you have spoken through her to us and help all of us to be doers of your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's rise on our feet as we close the service. I'd like us to speak into this week. I'd like us to make decrees. What do, we do? What do you want to see this week? Go before the Lord and make those decrees in the name of Jesus. Father, go and make decrees. Speak unto every day of this week. What do you want to experience? What do you want to, to receive from the Lord? Speak it right now. Speak it by faith. Speak it with confidence. I decree. This week I shall not fail. I shall not fall. This week I shall not fall. I will not fall into sin. I will not fall into temptations. I will not fall into distractions. This week, I am steadfast in the things of God. Speak, decree that thou may be justified. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Father, we have spoken this week. As we have spoken in your ears, so shall it be for us. I decree for every member and partner of this house, Go in peace, return with testimonies next Sunday, and may the God of heaven answer all your prayers by fire. I decree that every day of this week are the days the Lord has made, therefore each and every one of us shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is well with us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace and fellowship. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Is it well with you and your family? Yes, it is well. Is it well with your spirit, soul, and body? Yes, it is well. Is it well with every area of your life? Yes, it is well. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's take a moment to check on our friends who are not here today. Let's call them, let's text them, let's pray for them. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great week. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.